to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. One time, I remember a, a lady who was pregnant, true story, and she was about to give birth, but it was like nothing was happening for hours and hours. According to her, now she had been in the bank, I, I said the bank, the hospital, and they asked her to even walk around, up and down. She came back, lay down again. This thing was not coming, and they said, look, it's like they gave her some time that if it does not happen, they may have to induce her or maybe perform a CS. And she was sick and tired. She was tired, you know. She just felt fed up. And I don't know what happened. She sent a text. I think I was studying or I was doing something then. And I saw the text. I just thought to reply. And then I called her. I said, what is this? She was so happy. She said, I've been here a long time. And I just sensed the power of God. I said, that baby, without delay, come out now. God is my witness. I stand before the God of heaven. I don't think he was up to five minutes. And she just gave birth like that. Now, let me tell you this. The miracle is not just for her. It's for everyone who is mocking God within that ward or that hospital. If you are also pregnant too, and you watch somebody make a call, two of you are suffering and crying and hoping that this thing will work fast, and someone just makes a call, it doesn't matter who was the other, at the other side of the phone, and she gives birth immediately, what will you do? Are you see, listen to me, are you seeing that evangelism is easy when there are results? Evangelism is easy in the presence of notable results. Please believers hear me, we are, we, we are called into a life that demonstrates the reality of the power and the glory and the grace of God most of you are here now seated some of you have locked up your businesses some of you have left many busy things you should be doing some of you your own assemblies it will be unfair to just sit down and waste your time and share the grace no sir that by the time you are done here as you are going home is testimonies that will be distracting you distracting you distracting you you want to rest and another one comes please sit down it's good to be a good preacher a communicator of truth but it's best to be a good and powerful preacher one who has both the message and the backing the message and the backing the message and the backing believe me I have with all humility he has granted me the privilege of working in this reality of the miraculous and you would think that after many years of seeing this thing I would be tired and I would get used to it every single manifestation of God's power comes anew and afresh again do you know why because you look at the lives of people who have received this thing and you look at the economic advantage that that miracle has brought to them you look at the relational advantage it has brought to them So you are here seated and business is not working. You are in debt. Everything is scattered. Your life is gone haywire. Probably your rent or your building, everything. And then brothers and sisters, just like that, something from heaven through a man just rests on your life. And God says, I've sorted you. And you go back and doors begin to open for you. It is true. And in case you don't believe it, you are welcome. That's exactly why you should be here. 
Where else should an unbeliever be? In an arena where he can believe. Let me show you two more scriptures. There are conditions for us to receive. Acts 6, 8. When I was studying and I found this scripture, it really blessed me. The Bible says, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Stephen, full of faith and power. That means it took the union of faith and the power of the Holy Ghost for great wonders and miracles to happen. It will always take faith and the anointing. Listen carefully. It will always take faith in Jesus Christ, faith in the vessel that he will use, and then the power of the Holy Spirit upon the vessel that will be used by God. This is what produces miracles. The Bible says Stephen, he was full. He didn't just have it. That means it is possible for a man to have faith and power but not be full of it. Is that true? There are certain vehicles where if the gas, the fuel is on reserve, certain features in the car will stop functioning to help conserve fuel. Have you seen that kind of thing happen? That's how it can be in your life. That by the time you are not full of faith and power, to be able to conserve you and manage you, some dimensions will have to be shut down. But when you are full of power, you go to the gas station and fire that gas into that car and you now see the potential of that car. The ACs are on everything functioning at maximum strength. This is one of the reasons why impartation is powerful. This is one of the reasons why the word of God is powerful. You can be full of faith and you can be full of power. Don't say I have faith. Don't say I have power. There are different measures of it. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. In Ezekiel 47, there were four levels of an encounter with that river. So you might be here as a man of God, you might be here as a preacher, the head of a prayer group somewhere, and you've seen a measure of faith and power. It's time to upgrade this thing. So that certain possibilities that are not happening in your life can begin to happen. If you're with me, say amen. amen. The Bible says, Stephen, full of faith and power. Faith and power. Faith and the anointing. The assignment of faith is to connect you to the power of God. The assignment of the power of God is to, is to insist that the word of God that has been declared, that it comes to pass. You have to understand this. Faith in itself does not give you power. Faith is a connector, your convictions. And the assignment of faith is to commit God. Once God is committed, his power flows through that funnel of your faith to your situation. It is the divine power of God that does the work of correcting, of restoring, of creating. Are you learning? In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 5, the Bible says, He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you. Question, do it he by the works of the law or by the hearing that produces faith? You see it now. So he tells you how you can get that faith and that power. If I am to minister... There is something I am bringing as the man of God. I am bringing my faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm bringing the power of the Holy Spirit invested in me. That is my contribution to that miracle. Your own contribution. You don't need power. Your own contribution is your faith in Jesus and your faith in the vessel. Please understand this. I rebuke distraction in Jesus' name. You have to get this. This is how the miraculous works. So if you are in need of a miracle, here's how it works. The man of God or the vessel who will be used by God, what is his contribution in that equation of the miraculous? I will tell you, his contribution is his faith in Jesus that connects him to the power of God. His second contribution is that investment of spiritual power given to him 
either by the election of grace or through his personal press in the things of God or both. Are we together now? On your own part, the recipient of that, of that miracle, what is your contribution? Number one, to believe in Jesus Christ. And then number two, to believe the vessel that he's going to be using. It, it, it is important that you believe in Jesus, but then that you also believe in the vessel. When there is that combination, faith from your own part, faith in Jesus, faith in the vessel. From the man of God, his faith in Jesus Christ and the power of God given to him, there is nothing that will stop that miracle. If that miracle, every time the miraculous does not happen, these are the four things to check. On your own part, your faith in Jesus. Or number two, the degree and dimension of spiritual power that is at work in you may not be sufficient to produce that degree of miracle. On the part of the recipient, his faith in Jesus Christ. And the Bible here says that there is the hearing of faith. That means the operation of the miraculous starts with the, the declaration of the word, which is the basis for faith. Faith comes by hearing. Are we learning something tonight? Yes. The Bible says how that when Peter went at the hour of prayer he went to pray and he saw a man who was lame from birth at gates beautiful and he looked at them expecting to receive something so the man had faith he had faith in whatever they were doing and had faith in the vessels because he looked at them expecting to receive are we together now and then peter came and said silver and gold i do not have but such as i have give i unto you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk he believed in peter but he did not believe in what peter said so he sat down and there was no miracle next verse peter teaches us that he took him by the right hand he had to prime his faith mister if you keep looking at me you are going to sit down there forever are you seeing why we prompt people who receive to take action based on acts chapter 3 verse 7 so if you are on a stretcher and prayer has come and they say do what you could not do it is like peter taking him by the right hand because there are people who just sit down there and the moment there is no action there is no miracle God, listen to me john 2 fetch of the water and take to the priest the bible says, as they went the ten lepers go and show yourself to the priest the bible says as they went the man who was blind Go and wash in Siloam as he went. Are we together now? Notice that it was at the instance of action that there was a performance. The word of God comes. The power of God is released to confirm that word. Action is taken on your own part to connect with the power of God. Then the miraculous happens for you. This is true in the area of finances. This is true in the area of oppression. So, if there are demons hiding and sitting quietly, as they are hearing me talk like this, they will not leave. You know why they will not leave? Because a decree has not been given for them to leave. And you have not responded based on the instruction that makes them to leave. So until then, there might be a basis for them to hide behind people and situations. Now you understand what will happen in a few minutes here now. Right? That a decree comes by the power of God, usually to come in form of an instruction, even like you are hearing now. And as you respond to that instruction, leave the rest for God. The moment you respond, the power of God, like a tornado, collides with that spirit. Have you seen a bulldozer bringing down a house? Or any of these, these giant machines? It will tear down the house like a piece of paper. That's what the power of God does with demon spirits and anything that is antichrist. The only thing that is spared when the power of God moves is that which has the signature of Christ on it. Once it does not have the signature of Christ, it is called power against. There is power against. Like development control can mark certain houses. 
and say bulldozer once you see x don't ask questions you just bulldoze it that's what the holy ghost does he will mark certain things in your life financial limitation x you see that now different things now power of god you can come and i tell you the power of god the 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 angels are there is a coordinated work and scatter everything that does not look like christ how did jericho fall he received an instruction the hearing of faith are we together now he taught the people and communicated that instruction they took action as touching their faith in jesus and their faith in joshua and on the seventh day they went seven times and he said shout sometimes when you see me tell you okay shout the name jesus it's not ritual i'm showing you these things from scripture that shout is called the healer it's a shout that is able to bring mountains down hmm. every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome yeah. every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome prophesy every high thing say Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Next time, listen to me. When someone begins to ask you, how did it happen? You can tell them there is a part that I can explain. But there is a part I cannot explain. The part of my believing God and my believing his servant, I can explain it the part of his servant believing god i can explain the part of power coming on his servant i can explain but the part of power producing the result i cannot explain the bible says just as you do not know how the way of the wind or how bones are formed in her that is with child so you do not know the way of god the the spiritual dynamics of that miracle is beyond your realm so don't ask me how your destiny helper will find you in abuja uh -uh, uh -uh, that you are now entering a realm that is more than that is not for you you just know that once my faith connects to jesus my faith connects to his servant the servant of god's faith connects to jesus and connects to power when power is allowed to come there is no limit to what can happen i'm teaching you a powerful equation that you will have to use right away apostle how will my life change you can't you can't realize how many pages of prayer requests i put every one of them is the same formula that will bring it on your own part i've come prepared on my own part you see there is a twofold assignment as far as releasing the miraculous is concerned. Number one is my faith in Jesus Christ. And you ask him whether I believe him, in him or not. Number two, connection to his power, you see. So when we spend time with him to build capacity, we want to be full of faith and power. Not just to have faith and power. Having faith and power is not enough. You must be full of it for mighty wonders and miracles to happen. You are here tonight as different as our faces are so our situations for others it may be a financial situation i presume for most people for others it may be a health situation a demonic verdict by satan for others it may be a family situation the devil just wants to come and sit on the destiny of a family and tear them apart for others it may be your career for others it may be patterns of wickedness and witchcraft and all kinds of satanic things for others you don't even know what is wrong with you you came so that god will help you find out what in the world is wrong you are still welcome for others lack of children barrenness yoke that the devil has just placed upon people an embargo 
for others that they will not rise beyond certain realms or not even rise at all how about people who lose all kinds of things i once counseled a family years ago who true story that every time they receive any lump amount once it is a substantial amount darkness it looks like sickness will just blow it up in that family from mother sick father sick they, they will keep having a relay of sickness until the money finishes then you find out with the hospital or not everything will finish then i prayed for this woman who had a young lady a young daughter and i've heard people talk about matching charm and all these kinds of things and quite honestly i've not paid attention to it until i saw a leg that actually went through that thing when you see that leg you know how you boil potatoes you know how you boil yam that's how that leg was looking i said what in the world is this it was like the only thing that was left is just for doctors to finish their this and then they they now amp amputate it and cut it off how about these demonic things of objects moving in people's bodies have you heard those things some of you have those things they move around roam around as as no no and then you talk of strange dreams and occurrences like someone shared here you go to bed you are happy desiring to go forward you find yourself writing all kinds of nonsense an exam that never finishes a hole that you never see the end primary school doing all kinds of things you are seeing yourself with dead relatives that have gone this one is not cloud of witness this is demons just help those under the anointing there wicked spirits that just come some of those things are the spirit of the grave calling you i hope you know the grave has a voice oh yes sir it does that it can call men and say come to us please help them Harash and anybody here who that call has been coming over you in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god we silence the voice of the grave now please say i shall not die shout it say i shall not die but leave say it again i shall not die don't sit down listen to me listen to me listen to me listen to me your reality is based on what you believe not what your neighbor believes your reality is blessed is she not them that believe for unto her not unto them there shall be a performance don't sit down and allow a defeated life and smile over it again continue to contend until victory is won are we together the hearing of faith what does the hearing of faith do it makes you to have faith in jesus and to have faith in the vessel that he will use my own part is to study scriptures and be convinced to have faith in god mark chapter 11 from verse 22 23 24 jesus himself is teaching us through the story of the fig tree mark 11 from verse 22 jesus was answering said have faith in god next verse he says verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith the rule is in verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe 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 that ye receive them and you shall have them notice three important words there believe receive have there is a difference between receiving and having you can only have what you have received if you have not received it you cannot have it receiving is a spiritual activity 
having means that it is manifest here and now in your life believe receive have that's the question that will work for many people tonight that you believe and you receive and then you shall have because the bible says the same word is quick and powerful that means it does not delay it is quick and it is powerful tonight i welcome you to an experience of power an experience of grace and hear me do not allow this miracle service be like any other one no be very intentional whether you are outside all the overflows wherever down to the basement outside following online or following from whatever tv station just make sure your heart is opened and that you can receive right from where you are because jesus is in this place we have the singular assignment of re-presenting him to a world that is trying to forget him to remind them that he is alive to remind them that he is king to remind them that he is powerful but very quickly i just sense in my spirit while you are seated my heart is just there to make the altar call now before i even begin the ministration listen carefully the songwriter says jesus is the answer for the world today The question is man's inability to help himself. The issue is man's inability to give himself a future and a hope. Jesus Christ is the beginning and the foundation of a true Christian experience. Having a Christian name is not equal to being a Christian. Going to church is not equal to being a Christian. Hanging around a prayer warrior or a believer who loves Jesus does not make you a Christian you are here scattered looking at me in this main auditorium and then all across the overflows outside I believe that someone is seated and saying apostle hearing you speak I know that I need to take Jesus seriously I know that it's time for me to really make this decision for Jesus intentionally not by coercion and not just the play of emotions a genuine decision to live my life meaningfully so that whether in this life or even in the life to come i am sure that victory is guaranteed for me and there are yet others who are saying apostle i remember coming responding to an altar call here or i listened to a message and i made jesus lord but as it is my life has gone haywire and i need restoration wherever you are I'm going to count one to five across the balcony the basement everywhere outside when I count one to five I want you to leave your seat and come here come and stand if you are ashamed sit down just sit where you are and allow the devil to make a mess of your life but if you are determined to say there's no point pretending this thing I like you don't just come as if you are coming to a funeral please stand for space I want you to come with joy in your heart knowing that you are coming to Jesus come I'll begin my counting now one two Koinonia are you celebrating them it takes the Holy Spirit to bring men to Jesus those who are coming from outside this auditorium please run run to Jesus I love you, Lord. Keep coming. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul. Rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. And let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. 
just breathe your name upon me breathe keep coming to Jesus your hair will haze your name breathe Lord just breathe your name upon me breathe The Bible says, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. You are coming before Jesus, the one who is able to give every man a new beginning. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. So Jesus is a gift, a gift to you. And every gift can be accepted or rejected. Your coming here, like I taught you, is your own part of the faith. You have heard the word that produced faith and you have responded. Now, eternal life can be yours in this prayer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Do not allow the devil lie to you, condemn you, and make you feel that there is no future. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you an expected end. It is my joy that someday when this life is over, when you stand before him, we will see you. And you stand before Jesus as you behold him in his glory. If mama is coming, please help her. Is she coming to Jesus? My goodness, look at this. You made a way you you made a way the way to salvation you made a way please lift your right hand if you can as high as it can get and say this from the depth of your heart say lord jesus one more time say it say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe with my heart that you died for me i believe that you were raised for my justification tonight i make you my savior my lord my king i declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace, even the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. From today, I go forward ever and backward never keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones they have come to you and i pray by the power of the holy spirit that the power of sin satan hell the grave is right now broken over your life i declare according to scriptures that you are recipients of eternal life and in the name of jesus i commend you to the ministry of the word and I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you are established and you are grounded in the house of God and grounded in righteousness. You will go from glory to glory and from grace to grace in Jesus name. Just a final word before you follow our counselors. Listen to me. And this, this applies to everybody and those who are watching. Don't get born again and run away from the house of God. The Bible says, they that be planted. The house of God is not a cinema that you go and visit when you see a movie that you like. The house of God is not a museum that you go there when you hear that they brought something you want to see. It takes discipline and it takes diligence to be planted. A seed does not enter the ground and jump out at will. It stays there until it begins to bear root. And the Bible says, he shall be. Who is the he? The he that is planted shall be like a tree. 
listen carefully when you make when you just visit the house of god casually i feel like coming for koinonia today i think today's miracle service you're not going to grow that way they that be planted it takes discipline to be planted in the house of god and then the bible says that you will flourish in the courts of our god those they who are planted in the house of god it says they shall be like a tree that is planted by the riverside what a tree it doesn't wait for rainy season or dry season it it is constantly in a place of supply it says whose leaves does not wither and whatsoever he doeth prospers so i am encouraging you not only should you come and be born again and not only should you bring people to be saved as profitable uh, as profitable as that is you must encourage people to be planted in the house of god when you are encouraged to be planted in the house of god it's not just a search for crowd you should know that by now it is a desire to have people grounded in righteousness no student just strolls and goes for lecture or goes to school today and then leaves and then resumes after two years and then one day just does one week and then leaves you're not going to become an effective student that way it takes discipline and it takes diligence so let me encourage all of us who are here and then as many who are following and we who are here we we owe ourselves the duty to be disciplined as far as it has to do with the house of god knowing that when you come to the house of god number one you are not doing the man of god a favor number two you are not doing the church or the ministry a favor it is your own destiny you are the one who is planted that will flourish are we together praise the name of the lord so thank you so much aside from those under the anointing please i'd like you to please follow the counselors they are waving the placard just follow to my right now which is your left all other overflows please do same let's celebrate them as they go those under the anointing will just guide them carefully dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.